experience pleasure. Waiting for the day of her ascension, she would rather be with guards fighting back the evil that took her family than preparing to be found worthy by the gods. But the choice has never been hers. Welcome to XP Share. This is a summary and review of From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. We are introduced to Poppy, a maiden chosen by the gods, blessed or cursed with emotional or empathetic magic, as she is able to feel and soothe emotions. She attends a party and her guard tra slash trainer, Victor, appears. She searches for a way out of the pearl and stumbles into a room where she encounters Hawk, who mistakes her for a lady searching for pleasure. After her first intimate encounter with Hawk, we return to the keep and we meet her maiden in wait, Tawny, and we learn about the murders from the Cravens or the Dissenters or the Atlanteans as the case is ongoing. She provides us some exposition from a book about the War of Two Kings, the Kingdom of Solace, how Craven are hypothetically created, and the Atlanteans are generally bad. Shortly after, her guard and friend Rylan is killed in front of her in the garden and Poppy is forced to defend herself. This caught me a bit off guard. I thought maybe we would have them run away at some point to avoid her ascension, um, but being able to see Poppy in action for the first time against the Shadow Man was nice uh, to show off her abilities as a fighter um, and her commitment to follow through with some pretty fatal um, attack types. This was definitely a nice contrast to what seems uh, kind of like her constant naivety up to this point um, in, in inter basically any in interaction she has with the other characters. We see her later under counsel with discussions about who will be her new guard, and we see Poppy is hoping it's Hawk. While she simultaneously hopes it isn't and is him, uh, she worries that he will report her for being at the Red Pearl. The following day we find her at council meetings where citizens can petition the gods, council, and learn a bit about the right and how children are submitted to the gods to help maintain the order of things in exchange they protect them from things uh, that lurk outside the walls. Afterwards, Poppy is brought to the Duke to be chastised for getting herself scarred as well as becoming too friendly with the help, after he forces her to strip down and begins to beat her with a rod. That evening, the Rise is attacked and Poppy fends off foes and is attacked and stopped by Hawk, who knows it's her immediately. I really don't trust this guy. Uh, so far, he's too perfect to her and always kind of says the right thing puts up a bit of a flag for me. The next day, she does chat with Victor. Um, oh man, he better not die after calling her his daughter and they share an intimate hug. Another thought I kind of had here is terms like Macedonia, Atlanteans, Atlantia, um, for whatever reason, I keep thinking they're within some type of alternate earth. Um, I do have some visions of this being in kind of a Roman type era with a little bit more greens foliage. Um, but I do generally have some issues with placement and understanding the location in general and kind of the atmosphere and environment. During a reading to the Duchess, we see how far Hawk is willing to go to defend Penelope. I continue to distrust him, um, but he's got some good moments for sure. We continue to feel the conspiracies kind of interwoven within the hierarchy of the castle and learning more about the pantheon of the world. Um, we see a small knight of the right where we get very little details about what it is and then Poppy and Hawk spend the night wandering the grounds and eventually share a passionate scene only to be interrupted by Victor. And we finally have some emotion pour from Poppy, how she has nothing, feels nothing, and spills herself to Victor. Her life as a maiden who is covered and revered, wondering why anyone would want this, how her life feels meaningless, and finally admitting it. She wants to be found unworthy so she can have a life without judgment like everyone else. Uh, the Duke is apparently dead um, when they are heading back to her room after she's done speaking with Victor. If it wasn't Hawk, uh, I'm highly overestimating this character. If it was Victor, um, then that dude's even more amazing than I had originally thought. And it'll be um, even sadder when he's definitely going to die at some point. Then a super confusing battle happens. I did enjoy the pace and I could feel the panic um, within it. Throughout this book, um, I 
continue to have no context of what this building is that they live in. Um, I guess it's a, a keep or a castle. There's a, a supreme lack of description for the environments. This seems to either be a limitation or a choice to focus on the um, emotions and relationships um, between Poppy and Hawk to remain kind of the constant focal point. Um, the second half of the action scene was much better. Um, locked in a room, I was able to picture what was happening, the placement of the characters, and Poppy has another opportunity to show off in front of the royals. And of course, Victor died because of course he did. Sometime later, uh, Poppy is summoned to the capital, uh, spending the time to build up more sexual tension in the relationship between Hawk and Poppy. They fight some Borats and Craven, and eventually end up in a small town um, to rest where Poppy shares her secrets with Hawk, and they finally get the opportunity to act on the book's long tension um, between the two. Before the night's end, he does ask her to never forget. It was real, no matter what happens. He's keeping something from her, the rest of the book is um, pretty spoiler territory, so I, I am going to admit going deeper. I typically do spoilers within these types of reviews, but it's a pretty, I, f I feel like it's more major spoilers. But however, um, the end of the book is the best part of the book, but it's also um, incredibly frustrating. Um, I can't really relax during this book. I guess as a guy, this is... Uh, an amount of hypersexual rapiness uh, exuding from Hawk is kind of wild. Um, so I, I think women could, I guess, air quotes here, could enjoy um, this type of fantasy. However, for me, um, I'm just, I would never do this to someone. Um, it's not okay <laughs> for a man to do this to someone. I'm probably overthinking this to some extent. Um, but I had the same issues with 50 uh, Shades of Grey and couldn't finish the series. I have a core moral break um, and immersion in this book that just takes me out of the fantasy of it all. Um, now, that being said, the book is decent. Um, I did really enjoy some parts. Um, had some great moments. However, I am more excited for the second book now that we know um, that Hawk is a bit of a predator. Um, however, if I find out she's kind of into the whole thing, <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that plays out when we get there. But um, this has been another kind of summary and review of uh, Blood and Ash. Um, tell me what you think. Uh, comment down below. Like and subscribe. I'm going to be diving back into the Wheel of Time. Um, had a few anime reviews go out for Jujutsu Kaisen uh, as well as One Piece. Um, and plan on also uh, having one out here for um, The Completionist Chronicles Book 2 uh, Regicide. Should have that one out here um, in the next few days. But yeah, um, like I said, let me know what you think. Comment below, toss me a subscribe, and uh, have a good one.